Today we're diving into the newest updates in tech, EV, and Tesla news, including Tesla vehicle price hikes happening in under a week, Tesla offering the Cybercab with a steering wheel, the launch of the new Neo humanoid robot now available for order, Sharp entering the EV market, and much more. So let's jump right in. First up today, over at Tesla, they have changed their mission statement. Before, and it's still shown this way on their website, it read, accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy, but now they are shifting this to say, accelerating the world's transition to sustainable abundance. They shared this update on their X account, and it also appears inside the Tesla Diner. This new version clearly aligns with their latest master plan that focuses on AI, self-driving technology, and robotics far more than just clean energy alone. Of course, all of that still connects back to their energy foundation, since every product they make will depend on those energy innovations. But this update really highlights where the company is headed. They're not limiting themselves to making EVs and home energy storage anymore. I think that's become pretty clear, especially since they've mainly been launching cheaper models that are simply refreshed versions of existing ones at this point. And lately, nearly all of their focus has been on robotics, full self-driving, the cybercab, and what's next for Tesla in the long run. It's definitely a major shift to see them revise their entire mission statement to be broader than just speeding up the use of renewable energy, and instead focus on driving sustainable abundance overall. Now when it comes to their current lineup, Tesla has announced an upcoming price hike. Recently they revealed that a price rise was planned for their cars sometime in November. Initially it wasn't clear whether this referred to lease costs, full purchase prices, or something else, but now they've confirmed that lease payments are climbing by as much as $80 on the Model Y starting November 4th. The current monthly cost begins at $449 per month, but on November 4th, that will go up to $529 per month. Naturally, the question is how long that higher price will stay in place, and that's something we can never be certain about because, as usual, Tesla could change it again by the end of December. That will fall at the end of the quarter, and they'll likely offer some kind of incentive around that time. But this increase doesn't just apply to the Model Y, it's the same story for the Model 3. Right now, Tesla lists it starting at $329 per month, but they've also said it's going to rise to $429 per month, which is a $100 jump, even though they also list an $80 increase for that car as well. The situation is identical for the Cybertruck, it currently starts at $699 a month, and beginning November 4th, that will climb to $749 per month. When it comes to Tesla's longer-term vision, of course, we're talking about the Cybercab. During the design phase of this vehicle, Elon Musk made his stance very clear. He said, no mirrors, no pedals, no steering wheel. Let me be clear, this vehicle must be designed as a clean robo-taxi. We're taking that risk, but we're not going to create some amphibian hybrid that's half autonomous and half traditional. We are all in on autonomy. However, Tesla's board chair, Robin Denholm, has mentioned that the Cybercab might actually include a steering wheel and pedals after all, depending on regulatory requirements. In an interview with Bloomberg, she stated, if we have to have a steering wheel, it can have a steering wheel and pedals. Now moving to the other side of Tesla's lineup, away from the fully autonomous Cybercab, we have the Tesla Roadster. Tesla is currently hiring for a manufacturing engineer position focused on concept development and the launch of battery production specifically for the Roadster. The listing reads, quote, In this role, you will take large-scale manufacturing systems for new battery products and architectures from the early concept stage through equipment launch, optimization, and handover to local operations teams. Battery development is central to our company, and this is an exciting opportunity to work directly on the core challenges of the all-new Roadster architecture while it's still in early development. According to Franz von Holzhausen at Tesla, they still intend to showcase the Roadster's performance demonstration this year. However, it seems that full-scale production may still be quite a distance away, especially since Tesla's main focus remains on autonomy, which, as we know, continues to dominate their plans. Now, of course, what makes the Cybercab possible in the first place is Tesla's progress in self-driving technology. We can now see the updated map showcasing this system, and it spans over 200 square miles so far, which is definitely impressive. But naturally, the next major goal we'd like to see is removing the safety driver who monitors from the passenger seat or the driver's seat in specific cases. With the rollout of V14, however, Tesla has added a new aggressive driving profile called Mad Max, and this one is exclusive to version 14.1.2. This allows for more confident driving overall, with quicker lane changes, smaller following distances, and bolder passing maneuvers, though Tesla claims it doesn't actually surpass the limits of its hurry mode. However, NHTSA has launched an investigation involving roughly 2.9 million Tesla vehicles fitted with FSD because of these behaviors. This inquiry arises from 58 reports that include 14 accidents, 23 injuries, and traffic violations like running red lights while FSD was active. 
Now, looking at Tesla's competition in the robo-taxi space, the main player is of course Waymo, and they've recently revealed their fleet now drives about $186,000 miles per day autonomously. That's a 51% jump since February, showing strong progress on their end. Of course, their system is completely different. They rely on LiDAR, undergo years of training, and operate only in geo-fenced regions that are precisely HD mapped. But when you take a ride in a Waymo, there's absolutely no one inside. No safety driver, no human supervisor in the passenger seat, nothing. It's fascinating to watch how all these self-driving projects are evolving, but now let's move over to humanoid robots. Neo is the latest humanoid robot from Max, and you can actually place an order for it today. It's built as a personal home assistant meant to handle everyday tasks like opening doors, retrieving objects, switching lights, doing laundry, and much more. For now, it still depends largely on human teleoperation, which the company describes as keeping a human in the loop. At first, human operators will directly assist Neo with tasks it hasn't yet learned to perform independently. This guidance helps the robot master those actions and eventually carry them out on its own. It's specifically built for home use and safety, featuring a soft, sweater-like outer layer, tendon-driven movement, and quiet functionality overall. The overall design appears sleek, friendly, and clearly intentional to make it approachable, though users will still have to share a significant amount of data. Currently, it's available for pre-order at $20,000 or through a $499 monthly subscription with deliveries expected to begin in 2026. You can reserve one today with a $200 deposit, which is completely refundable. Next, over at Lucid, the company has teamed up with NVIDIA to bring their Drive AV platform and the Drive AGX Thor computing system into upcoming mid-size vehicle models. Their self-driving roadmap begins with a level 2 system for current vehicles like the Lucid Gravity SUV and later targets full level 4 autonomy, meaning eyes off, hands off, and mind off driving overall. Lucid states this setup will rely on their complete multi-sensor array, including cameras, radar, and LiDAR, along with dual AGX Thor computers running NVIDIA Drive OS in future vehicles to enable that level 4 functionality. They also discussed further NVIDIA collaborations to improve manufacturing in other systems. Meanwhile, over at Ford, production of their F-150 Lightning electric truck has been paused at the Rouge Electric Vehicle Center in Michigan. This pause came after a fire at an aluminum supplier disrupted the material supply heavily used in the F-Series lineup, so Ford is shifting its focus and staff toward building the gas and hybrid F-Series trucks, which they say bring higher profits and depend less on the limited aluminum supply. All hourly employees at the Rouge plant are being reassigned to help launch a new third shift at the nearby Dearborn truck plant, Dan Ain Ein Ein Alta to assist with the increased production of gas and hybrid F-Series models. Now, while that's the main reason behind the situation, Ford says F-150 Lightning assembly will stay halted, and they haven't provided a specific timeline for when it will restart. Overall, in Q3 of 2025, their EV division reported a major loss totaling around $1.4 billion. Finally, to wrap up today's news, over at Sharp, the company has revealed the second version of its LDK Plus electric vehicle concept. With this reveal, they're presenting an EV concept that's meant to act as an extension of your home's living space. The design is based on the Model A platform developed by Foxconn, combining a compact exterior with a roomy cabin to provide both agility and comfort. It features a rotating driver's seat, a center console with a table and projector between the front seats, a rear ceiling mounted roll-down screen that can serve as a theater or meeting area, and an integrated smart home system allowing it to sync with kitchen appliances, HVAC, laundry, solar, and energy setups, as well as vehicle-to-home networks. That's all the latest in tech, EV, and Tesla updates for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.